Hello, and welcome to the video accompanying the second in my Objective-C Primer series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an object for a car, as well as implement some methods for that object, and we're going to get our feet wet in Xcode. If you've never used Xcode before, I highly recommend you take a look at my Xcode tutorial that should hopefully be posted somewhere around this. Uh, for now, I'm going to assume that you're fairly familiar with it, so we're going to jump right in. First thing you're going to do is launch Xcode. Then we're going to create a new Xcode project. The type of project that we want to create is under Mac OS X, we want to create an application. Choose Command Line Tool. And then under Type, we want to choose Foundation. Click Choose. It'll ask you what you want to save it as. I'm going to go ahead and error title mine car app. And then it takes me into Xcode. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is select our source file, which is going to be named carapp.m. You can see that it's injected a little bit of source code into here. We are going to actually go in and delete where it says insert code here and nslog hello world. And that's going to leave us with our starting point. So now let's go ahead and begin to implement things. The very first thing that we need to do is tell Xcode what our object is going to look like. And to do that, we're going to create what's known as an interface. So I'm going to go up here above the main procedure, and I'm going to type at interface, and you're going to see that it gives me some auto-completion options right here. We're actually going to go ahead and use these auto-completion options. So you hit tab, and it asks me to fill in a class name. We're going to name our class Hit tab again, it asks for the superclass. Our superclass is going to be NS object. Hit tab one more time. And then we're going to start defining the properties that are associated with the object that we're trying to create. So we're going to create two properties, only one of which we're actually going to use in this tutorial. First property is NS string. We're going to call it color. Then we're going to create a location of type integer. Hit tab to go down to the methods, and we are actually going to define four methods for this project. The first method we're going to define is move car forward, and it's going to take a, uh, a variable of type integer that is called feet. We'll do the same thing for move car backward. And we're going to do the same thing for, or we're going to do something similar for set location. Except this time, rather than calling it feet, we're going to call it where. Then we are going to create a method called get location. Except this time, it's not actually going to take any variables, but it will return an integer. With that, we've actually completed our interface. The next thing that we need to do, now that we've told Xcode what the properties and methods that this object contains are, is actually tell it how those methods work and how those methods interact with the properties that we've created. So what we're going to do is, is to do that, you create what's known as an implementation block. And you can see again, it gives us some auto-completion options here, which we are in fact going to use. So to use those, you hit tab and it asks for our class name. In this case, it's car. Then it's time for us to start implementing methods. The first method that we're going to implement is the move car forward method. So just like we prototyped before, we're going to go ahead and type in the same section to define our method. Except this time, we're going to create some curly braces so we can start typing in some code. So, tab over, and what we're going to do is, is we are actually going to tell it that when we are, when somebody calls this method, we want to add the number of feet that they give us to the location that is currently set on this car. So, we say location equals the previous location plus feet. Simple enough. And what location is, is location is actually defined right here. 
as one of the properties in our object. So that's what this car is going to keep track of. When we come down, we start implementing the next method. We're going to do the same thing for move car backward, except this time we're actually going to subtract the number of feet. Makes sense. Next, we need to go ahead and figure or set up some way that we can actually set the location of the car without moving it to that location, just set it, as well as figure out where the car is. So we need to implement a get location method. So first we're going to do set location. This time, rather than saying or including location in the function or in the method, what we're going to do is we are just simply going to say location equals where. For get location, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to actually return the variable. And so here you have it we have our four basic methods implemented. Move car forward, move car backward, set location, and get location. So let's go ahead and create a car and see how that works. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we are actually going to create a object of type car. So you define this just like you define any other variable. And all objects are referred to as, or referred to using pointers in Objective-C, so add the asterisk, and then we're going to name our car, new car. Now, the very first thing that we need to do is we need to, in the giant blank slate of memory that exists within the computer, we need to define a hole for a car to be built within. So to do that, we are going to actually tell the object prototype to create enough memory for it. So we're going to call alloc. And then what we're going to do is we actually have to build the car, so to speak. So we call init on that object. And you're going to do this with virtually every object you are creating. Once we've done that, we can start writing code. Now, the very first thing we need to do is actually set our car to have some location. So we're going to actually set our car to be at location 0. So there you go. New car set location 0. Then we're going to move our car forward 5 feet. And we're going to move it backward 3 feet. Once we've done that, we want to go ahead and let the user know exactly where the car is located. So we're going to use nslog to do that. And you might be familiar with this syntax. It's pretty similar to what you'd use with printf or sprintf or any of those functions. Uh, the at sign before the string actually states that we want to create a string using the text that appears after the at. It just saves us some, uh, uh, some typing, makes it a little bit easier. And then once we're done, because we created space for the car, we need to go ahead and clean it up and get rid of the car. Alas, as much as I would love to keep it. So we release the space. Now before we actually build our application, let's go ahead and show the console so that we can see what it is that it's doing. So we are going to go to run. We're going to come down to console. Move this over to the side a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and click build and run. You can see that it compiles, it goes through, and it does exactly what we'd expect it to do. We set the location to zero, move it forward five, and then backward three, so we would expect it to be at two. And sure enough, the car is located at two. 